Hello, I'm John Coleman, Managing Director of the Global Landscape Forum. On behalf of the GLF, welcome to today's event at the GLF Climate Conference here in Glasgow at this beautiful University of Glasgow campus. We are proud to be hosting the launch of the Folor Impact Program and thank you for joining from wherever you are in the world. As the world's largest knowledge-led platform on integrated land use, we can't think of a better program to support than Folor. And we hope you will stay tuned to Folor programming throughout the year and throughout the years ahead on various GLF channels. Now let's head inside to start the program. Enjoy your front row digital seat. Hello, I'm Chris Brett, the Lead Agribusiness Specialist at the World Bank. On behalf of the FOLOR team, we're delighted you could join us to learn about this exciting new program. I have the pleasure of moderating a discussion of FOLOR champions, discussing why FOLOR is the solution needed now for climate change. I'd like to start with Carlos Rodriguez, the CEO and Chairperson of the Global Environment Facility. Carlos Manuel, as the funder of FOLOR, can you please share why you feel FOLOR is so timely? And what is Jeff's vision for FOLOR and the integrated approach? So thanks, uh, Chris, and, and I'm really excited to be here speaking today on the, on the launch of uh, FOLOR Impact. Uh, and, and the context uh, on where we are uh, presenting this, which is uh, uh, the COP26 uh, proceeding, I think it cannot be more relevant in time uh, for this very innovative uh, program to be launched. Food system land use and restoration of landscape has been always uh, a, a small agenda within the climate. The broad, large uh, climate change agenda has been historically captured by the energy and transportation sector, by the forest sector. Um, uh, food systems may be the biggest challenge as uh, in terms of uh, climate change, as we are able to advance in the energy and the forest sector. In, in sectors that we already have, you know, uh, the technology, the, the understanding of the right policies and incentives and processes where the, the private sector is very much engaged. Uh, but in terms of uh, how do we produce our, the, our food, and land use and the need to restore the, the, the landscapes, our experience are very limited. And that is why I feel that the launch of the full lure impact with the guidance of, of the World Bank and the commitment of almost 30 countries is extremely encouraging because it will give us the base for these efforts so we can be able to bring into this sector the, the resources, the learn lessons, the technologies that can help us overcome one of the biggest uh, challenges in the global agenda. For the GF, the integrated approach is something extremely important. For 30 years, we've been working in supporting countries in the implementation of the different conventions, but we've been supporting them uh, working basically on silos or responding to every single convention. Uh, for the last four years, to the integrated approach uh, program, the GF has understood that the highest return for our investment is investing in the root case of the problem, not just on, on the problem itself. That is why, uh, in looking in uh, towards the next uh, GF cycle, which will be GF8, we will be investing more in expanding our capacities in terms of uh, more integrated approaches and more flexibility for countries so they can design projects that respond 
in a in a, uh, in, a, a in, mo in multiple ways uh, to the different conventions. Today, um, investing in forward means that you are investing in preserving and restoring biodiversity, uh, investing in mitigating and adapting to climate change, in um, in helping address the issue of uh, land degradation and, the, and desertification. But also, most importantly, it helps us to bring the chemicals conventions and waste conventions into the real conventions. Folur becomes this magnet, this glue that brings all the elements of all the different uh, global environmental conventions in a single uh, in a single program in a single approach. And this is what it is so beautiful uh, about uh, this um, this program. So I'm really really excited to be leading the organization that is promoting this to work with the World Bank and with many countries that strongly believe that Fort Lure is the right approach. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that perspective and enthusiasm, Carlos Manuel. Your passion for the program and his approach is clear. Now I'd like to turn to my colleague, Karen Kemper, the Global Director for Environment, Natural Resources and Blue Economy at the World Bank. Karen, can you share more context why transforming agricultural practices is so critical to the environment and a sustainable, equitable future? Thanks, Chris. We are at a time of unprecedented environmental crisis, and many of the most concerning trends are driven by agriculture and food systems. Follower is desperately needed as a program. The COP proceedings this week continue to highlight the outsized impact of agriculture on nature. Deforestation and land conversion contribute about 25% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Healthy and intact ecosystems capture and store carbon and mitigate the impacts of climate change. The agriculture sector is also one of the biggest drivers of biodiversity loss. The global decline in biodiversity and ecosystem services is a development issue, which is likely to affect the poorest countries the most. The loss of ecosystem services has negative effects on food security, livelihoods, and economies. Between 5 to 8% of global crop production with an annual market value of up to 577 billion US dollars relies on natural pollinators. And meanwhile, the pace of restoration of degraded landscapes is not fast enough to address urgent global needs. Needs. If just 12% of the world's degraded lands were restored to production, we could feed another 200 million people and farmers' incomes would be raised by 40 billion US dollars per year. So there's a very powerful interdependency between agriculture and the natural world with so much potential to improve livelihoods through better land management and restoration. And in addition, the COVID-19 pandemic has focused the world's attention on the close relationship between human and planetary health. Pathogens thrive where there are changes in the environment, like deforestation and when natural ecosystems are under stress. So for all of these compelling reasons, we need to go beyond traditional climate mitigation and conservation efforts and take a more comprehensive approach, like FOLUR. So as Carlos mentioned, the FOLUR design recognizes that tackling the challenges related to unsustainable land use requires an integrated approach in the landscape and across key value chains. FOLO will provide countries with needed support to tackle institutional and market failures and repurpose um, resources. And in the public sector, the program can engage governments to incentivize sustainable land use nationally. For example, repurposing public expenditures on agriculture can lead to an 8% avoided loss in natural land and a $56 billion gain in real GDP. Follower will work with the private sector to demonstrate the business case for investing in deforestation-free supply chains, as well as landscape scale restoration. Today, 
we have an opportunity to transform economies as we rebuild from the pandemic. And initiatives like FOLOR can help advance green, resilient and inclusive development and long-term sustainability. I'll turn the microphone over to my colleague, Martin, who I know shares my enthusiasm and hope for what a program like FOLOR can achieve. Thank you, Karen, for connecting the dots between agriculture and food and climate change and land degradation. To hear from the agricultural perspective, I'd like to invite my colleague, Martin Van Eukop, the Global Director for Agriculture and Food at the World Bank. Martin, can you clarify the pathway to transform food systems and restore landscapes? Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. And I think that's an excellent question. Um, our global food system is driving you know, biodiversity loss and deforestation, as Karen outlined as well. No? I mean, I mean, agriculture, second only to energy for its contribution to global emissions. I mean, decarbonizing the sector is an urgent and essential step on the journey to net zero. I mean, the COVID-19 crisis also exposed the weakness of our global food system you know, it has a market value of about $10 trillion per year, but generates significant hidden health, environmental and social costs estimated up to $12 trillion annually. Thankfully, the world is waking up to this. I mean, with the UN Food System Summit and now COP26, I mean, the stars are aligning to change food systems for the better, supporting healthy people, healthy planets and healthy economies. Uh, I think we have a unique opportunity now to put in place the right incentives and support investments to accelerate food systems transformation as part of the sustainable, inclusive and resilient recovery. We can reverse natural resource degradation to agriculture, uh, conserving natural ecosystems and improving resilience also generate economic benefits. Simple interventions to change farming practices can reduce emissions, boost biodiversity and help farmers bottom line, even as the climate becomes more and more challenging. Considering all this, I think a food systems transformation is within reach. But of course, you know, with only 3% of all global climate financing going to agriculture, there's a huge financing gap that needs to be addressed urgently. The Global Environmental Facility is taking a big, a big step forward in closing this gap I mean, to the new integrated program FOLU that we are discussing today. I mean, this program is launching its country programs at a very important time in a historic year for food systems and as part of the decade of action. FOLU will make food production more sustainable. I mean, delivering environmental benefits, efficient food value chains at scale, and by doing so, contributing to the just rural transition. We do this by focusing on integrated solutions in 27 priority countries, across eight key commodities, and by levering these investments by a factor of 10. Uh, the program builds on the World Bank's strong track record as the largest financier of agriculture in developing countries, with about $5 billion in new lending by the Agriculture and Food Global Practice in our fiscal year 2021. Uh, this lending generated almost 60% of climate co benefit, benefits, and thereby also making the bank the biggest financier of climate smart agriculture in the world. But of course, you know, no institution can do it alone. I mean, to match the scale of ambition for climate change and to come anywhere close to the sustainable development goals. Everybody needs to pitch in. Government needs to make their support for agriculture and food more effective. And the private sector urgently needs to up its game when it comes to adopting sustainability standards. And on top of this, we need to accelerate climate smart agriculture innovations, especially unlocking the vast potential of, di of digital technologies. So in this respect, I mean, the Volor Impact Program represents a very big step in the right direction to accelerate food systems transformation on the ground. And we hope the program's early result and lessons learned will inspire others to follow, to follow suit. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Martin, for your insightful inputs and views. This panel clearly demonstrates why FOLOR and its integrated approach are needed to realize ambitious commitments for a sustainable future. 
Now I'm pleased to introduce our first FOLOR country snapshot to highlight how the programme has accelerated action in Ghana. My name is Isaac Charles Aqua Jr., a director and head of natural resources department of the Environmental Protection Agency of Ghana and co-project coordinator for the Ghana Landscape Restoration and Small Scale Mining Project under the FOLI. Given the issues of multiple land use and their implications, Ghana is looking to take a landscape approach to address the challenges and positively impact the cocoa value chain. This includes taking a path that links both upstream and downstream actions. Thus, moving beyond a single sector intervention to a more integrated landscape approach for sustainable land and water management. Ghana approach focuses on connecting ecosystem institution and financing. When we take ecosystem, we are bringing together agricultural landscape, wildlife biological corridors, forest reserves, together for on ground restoration and rehabilitation investments. Secondly, under the institutions, collaborating across sectors, thus agriculture, environment, forest, wildlife, and water resources. We bring key stakeholders together for joint decision making and actions to support sustainable integrated landscape management, all for shared impact. Then, thirdly, the financing. Efforts to consolidate financing by bringing together several sources of funding for more meaningful and larger impact. The Ghana Landscape Restoration and Small Scale Project will be implemented through the World Bank and combine multiple financing sources for a total of 103 million United States dollars, which includes a World Bank credit, leveraging with grant financing from the Global Environmental Facility, the Pro Green Trust Fund, and the Extractive Global Programmatic Support Trust Fund, and Ghana's own contribution under one program. Ghana recognizes the relevance of the folly and is wishing to promote an integrated approach to food systems and land use management. It hopes to both contribute to and benefit from the program. Interventions designed under the folly aims for healthy ecosystems, which play an important role in the resilience of local vulnerable communities and Ghana's national determined contribution appropriately place a strong emphasis on adaptation to climate change for emphasizing community resilience. Sustainable land and water management and access to services and benefit from sustainable management. Protected forests can help vulnerable communities to better absorb and adapt to impacts of shocks and stresses, including among them climate change. The project is expected to contribute to the mitigation and adaptation objectives of the Ghana National Determined Contributions. In addition, the project intervention with a focus on livelihood, vulnerability, reduction and healthy ecosystem will help contribute towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goal 1, 13, and 15, and also at the national level aligned with the coordinated program of economic and social development efforts. Lastly, in the light of the COVID pandemic, the project under the folio places emphasis on people and local livelihood to enhance resilience, including a strong focus on gender responsive intervention, gender equality and inclusion. Thank you and please move on to the next speaker. The Food and Agriculture Agency of the United Nations is proud to collaborate with the Food Systems, Land Use and Restoration Impact Program, FOLU. 
This program reflects FAO's commitment to support countries in the shift towards climate resilient and inclusive agri-food systems. This transformation is fundamental to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement. New and innovative approaches are urgently needed to realize a sustainable future and FAO is excited to promote the concept of an integrated approach through FOLUR. FOLUR helps integrate efforts across sectors, stakeholders, ecosystems and financing. The United Nations Decade for Ecosystem Restoration and the JEF-7 Dry Land Sustainable Landscapes Impact Programme will be implemented along with FOLUR. FOLUR will also build on the momentum of the United Nations Food System Summit, integrating outcomes, alliance and innovation hubs to support countries in their national transformational pathways. Within FOLUR, FAO and a coalition of partners will accelerate public and private sector engagement by consolidating knowledge and best practices and coordinating sustainability efforts at different scales. For example, FAO will lead in the development of a sustainable production landscape toolkit for demand-driven learning to address both special and vertical dimensions of agri-food systems by promoting agroecology across landscapes and linking up to agriculture decision-making process at the global, regional, national and sub-national levels. FAO is fully committed to the strategic JEF-7 flagship program and I look forward to jointly achieving the ambitious objectives of FOLUR so that, together, we can transform to more efficient, resilient, inclusive and sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, better environment and a better life, leaving no one behind. Thank you.女士们、先生们，大家好，非常高兴在联合国气候变化框架公约第二十六次对外方大会期间参加全球环境基金粮食系统土地利用与恢复影响计划启动会。我是中国农业农村部科技教育司副司长李波，在此呢，我仅代表
，耕地重金属污染严重，还需大力推进农业绿色低碳发展。面向可持续发展的中国农业生态系统创新性转型项目，作为全球粮食系统土地利用与恢复影响计划的子项目之一，以小麦、玉米。和水稻等大宗作物生产系统为目标，采用综合的方法，开展农田景观综合规划、可持续农业生产技术创新、农产品生态价值评估等活动，有助于构建生态补偿激励机制及利益相关方伙伴关系，推动农业生态系统综合管理和农产品价值链延伸。实现生物多样性保护、土地修复、应对气候变化的协调发展。正如 FAO 副总干事玛利亚·海伦娜·塞梅多女士提到的，跨部门和利益相关方的共同努力是实现可持续粮食系统建设的关键。我们将在借鉴和吸收国外先进理念和经验的基础上。加强多部门的协同，与全球项目实施伙伴、国际执行机构、地方政府和私营部门紧密合作，创新合作机制，分享项目成果，撬动更多配套资金，促进中国农业景观和农产品价值链向环境和生态可持续方向转型，构建可持续的粮食系统。为全球农业绿色发展提供可复制、可借鉴的中国方案。中国农农业农村部及其在华合作伙伴很荣幸参与全球粮食系统土地利用与恢复影响计划这一行动。让我们在联合国气候变化框架公约第二十六次缔约方大会和生物多样性公约第十五次缔约方大会的基础上。朝着更可持续的粮食生产体系和更可持续的未来迈进。那么最后呢，预祝本次大会取得圆满成功。谢谢。Good day. It's a pleasure to be here. I am Andrew Bavanek, Global Head of Food and Agricultural Commodity Systems at the United Nations Development Program and Director of the GEF Supported Good Growth Partnership. UNDP leads the Good Growth Partnership, which is joining FOLOR to advance sustainability and global value chains. The Good Growth Partnership strives to forge new ways of doing business that enable economic growth without the environmental consequences of unsustainable production. For four years, the Good Growth Partnership has worked to reduce deforestation in soy, beef, and palm oil in Brazil, Indonesia, Liberia, and Paraguay. From this experience, we've learned key approaches and challenges to transform entire value chains. We've learned that instead of treating production, demand, and investment interventions as separate tracks, we need to focus on how they interact and sequence and connect for greater impact. An integrated approach to value chain engagement. We are bringing this idea and the power of the existing partnership to FOLOR. We will build on our track record, and we are excited to scale our approach to 27 countries. To transform commodity production, we will be providing training and share knowledge with FOLO teams, key stakeholders, and the public. Under FOLO, we will focus on supporting sustainable production, generating responsible demand, enabling sustainable transactions and financial innovation. And providing evidence to policymakers for more effective national and subnational multi-stakeholder dialogue for collaborative action. By by combining forces with FOLO, the Good Growth Partnership aims to provide a model for wide-scale systemic reform in our global food system. UNDP looks forward to contributing to FOLO's ambitious global agenda. UNDP is also managing several FOLO country projects, and I'm delighted now to introduce an example of our ambition for country-level change. Thank you and enjoy.
Good morning. I am Musdalifah Mahmud, Deputy Minister for Food and Agribusiness Coordinating Ministry for Economic Affairs of Republic Indonesia. With respect to the complexity and diversity of Indonesia as archipelago country and the challenges of food system drivers, such as demographic, economic, social culture, and climate change, I believe the transformation of food systems in Indonesia should be implemented on the basis of three approaches. One, comprehensive and integrated of cross-sectoral issues and action areas of development. Two, inclusiveness through national platform that involves multi-stakeholders collaboration and partnership. And three, food systems regionalization through promoting localizing food systems across Indonesia. For Indonesia, for for your commodities, namely palm oil, cocoa, coffee, and rice, are all important. Palm oil, cocoa, and coffee are important as these commodities have contributed in deriving export earning while rice is a most strategic commodity as the main staple food for the national food security. So the four commodity is quite important in follower intervention program in Indonesia. Overall, from production side, the four commodities are produced by small farmers with significant challenges faced by the small farmers like low awareness on regulation and policies, lack capacities for best agriculture practices, has led impact on biodiversity, land degradation, as well as loss of carbon stock. Balancing the production of commodities to meet the market demand and at the same time safeguarding the environment resort through policies and law enforcement have been quite a challenging task. However, the government of Indonesia has set policies indicating our commitment that the Indonesian government has done so much effort to uphold the sustainability principles. The biggest opportunity will be to work on a comprehensive strategy and with multi stakeholders from different sectors such as agriculture, forestry, and even infrastructure. We will work not only with different actors, but also to have the opportunity to work on cross-cutting issues and different level of policies in national and sub-national level. Additionally, strengthening conservation policy, building resilient livelihood, and improving agriculture practices are the key points that we want to address through the program. Indonesian government has streamlined its commitment to sustainability through its national long-term development plan. The development plan has several focuses in its objective to mainstream green growth and low carbon development. We believe through FOLUR, an integrated strategy of landscape management combined with improvement of governance in the commodities production will bring a fresh approach toward a sustainable environment management. What's important to note and to underline is that the government cannot work alone. We need collaboration and cooperation from multi-stakeholders, both from domestic and foreign, to build an inclusive and participative process. At the end, we believe that the commitment of more sustainable future can be achieved through systematic changes and ultimately benefiting the livelihood of Indonesian people.
Hi, my name is Tanya Lozanski, and um, I'm a senior manager for our advisory business in manufacturing agribusiness services at IFC. For those of you who don't know IFC, we're the largest development institution that's focused exclusively on the private sector in emerging markets. And agribusiness has been a priority area for us for many years. We provide both investments and advisory services to companies in the agribusiness sector around the world. And today our investment portfolio in the agribusiness sector is approximately three and a half billion dollars. Now, when IFC invests in agribusiness companies, we don't just want to give them the money, we also want to make sure that we're actually making sustainability a business driver. And this is why our advisory business comes alongside our investments to really help companies with introducing best practices when it comes to smallholder supply chains, resilience, climate smart practices, gender smart approaches, and help them become demonstration cases for other companies to follow. And that's why we're so excited to be a part of the follower impact program, where we as IFC will contribute both through mobilizing private sector capital to um, support the supply chains and the fuller countries and commodities, but also to use our knowledge and expertise and talk about what works. Um, what are companies doing that has a business case? Um, what is not working so well? And how can we together advance um, this important agenda? I think it's very fitting that this event is taking place during the climate COP because FOLUR and the program that we have developed is really at the core of transforming our food systems to both mitigate climate change, but also to build resilience for the stakeholders on the ground who need it the most. So we as IFC have also committed to mainstreaming gender smart approaches in all of our agribusiness advisory programs. We know that while women make up half of the labor force in agricultural supply chains, especially in emerging markets, they're frequently outside um, the, the mainstream in terms of access to resources, access to financial services, access to inputs, and as a result, their productivity is even lower um, than that of the men. And so if we're really aiming to transform the food systems, it's really important that our clients and partners take a gender smart approach because it also makes good business sense for them and has a, a positive impact on their bottom line. So with that, um, I would like to introduce the next panel that will explore the role of the private sector in transforming the environmental impact of food systems and commodity production. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Holder, Executive Vice President of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And I'm so pleased to be here with you today to help launch the Follower Impact Program for the World Bank. WBCSD is a global CEO-led organization of over 200 leading businesses working together to accelerate the transitions to a sustainable world. We are huge supporters of the Forlore private sector agenda and are here to really help promote private sector engagement into this program. We know how important it is for CEOs and other leaders in the private sector to get involved and to bring the, it's the finance sector and the finance network into this work as well. We can also provide lessons learned based on our experience in working with our member companies along and across value chains in partnership with others to address these incredibly challenging sustainability issues. One example that I'm excited to get into with all of you today is the work we're doing in the Soft Commodities Forum to address deforestation from soy production. For context, the complexity of the soy supply chains means that no single business can tackle deforestation in this value chain alone. This complexity isn't unique, so we can draw lessons learned from soy that are relevant for other full lower commodities. In 2018, the Soft Commodities Forum was established, it's hosted within WBCSD, and it's really designed to enable collaboration, making it the only forum in which companies are coming together, agreeing to find the kind of collective solutions to these sustainability issues on the ground for this value chain specifically. The SCF's six current members have all pledged to make their soy supply chains free from deforestation. And I'm really happy that we've got a representative from one of our SCF members here with us today. Wei Peng is the Global Head of Sustainability for Grains and Oil Seeds at Louis Dreyfus. She joins me here. And Wei, it's so exciting to 
be able to have this conversation here together. I'm looking forward to hearing more from you on LDC's sustainability commitments, the role of a initiative like the Soft Commodities Forum, and how the integrated approach that Fuller is taking can really help the private sector reach our sustainability goals. So welcome. Let me begin by asking you, inviting you to come in and talk a little bit more about LDC's commitment to achieving in this instance, zero deforestation in its soy supply chain. Tell me what that's like working within the organization. Thank you very much, Diane, and the Fuller team for this opportunity to join today's launch event. Uh, so first of all, Louis Dreyfus is a global agribusiness with a diverse commodity trading footprint, including soybean. We formalized our soy sustainability policy back in 2019, committing to a supply chain free from deforestation and native vegetation conversion. Since then, we have been working diligently both within our supply chain and also with our peers and other value chain partners towards this goal. We have widely socialized our commitments and expectations with our suppliers while applying various tools to trace soy back to its origin, conduct supplier due diligence and monitoring. This has allowed us to understand possible risk exposure and prioritize our intervention accordingly. And uh, from the supply chain side, um, that's what we have been primarily focusing on. And also we have been working quite extensively with external partners, including our suppliers, uh, peers, and other value chain uh, players uh, to work towards this common goal uh, at the sector level. Thanks, Wei. I think that knowing that there's a lot of increased interest, at least as a starting point to help building that understanding. And like we said at the beginning, it really, there is no way one company can do this on their own. It really does take the value chain working together. But in this case, we also have the Soft Commodities Forum, as we've referenced. It's a way where traders can come together in a pre-competitive space and work as a, as a sector across this value chain to try to shift these challenges and achieve some real momentum. Where is LDC seen as the value from working in this kind of platform? Have there been any surprises, any unexpected wins? Do you see this as a, a, a shift in how you can do business to move these things forward? Yes, um, so the Soft Commodities Forum uh, is hosted by WBCSD. Uh, it brings together six largest agri-commodity traders worldwide to collectively improve soy supply chain transparency and address deforestation and land conversion challenges in Brazil's critical Cerrado biome. So Luis Dreyfus is one of the founding members of the, for of the forum, and we've been working uh, under the forum with our peers uh, in the past uh, almost three years. So surely uh, the competitive nature of the members uh, poses certain challenges sometimes, but looking back, it has proven very rewarding to leverage our collective market position and resources to define common priorities and indicators and to engage with key stakeholders across the value chain, and also to now, um, uh, as the next step, to implement collective intervention on the ground level to revert the deforestation trends in key landscapes. So I think this could not have been easily achieved by individual companies single-handedly. So this collective effort has proven very rewarding in that sense. Um, so that's a great summary of a sector, a group of companies coming together. As we reflect back now on the Folor Impact Program, Folor is aiming to work at the landscape level. And increasingly, this is presented as the scale that's necessary for us to come together to work and actually achieve long-term sustainable results. But when we talk about transforming landscapes, that can be hard for companies, even with their value chains, to really wrap their heads around and understand what it means from an individual or sector contribution. So what does transforming landscapes mean to LDC? And where do companies like LDC need help in realizing that this is a more holistic, sustainable type of intervention to take on, to address key weaknesses and structural challenges? Any inputs you have for Folor to consider in as they embark on this process, I'm sure would be um, highly valued. Yes, um, I, 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 I personally find it very interesting to see this evolution from a, a company-centric uh, to a commodity-centric 
and now to a landscape centric approach, which is a, a definitely a very positive evolution of the way of thinking and working to address the common challenges that we we aim to address uh, as as a as a, as a, as, a, as a society and as 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 a as a, as a commercial uh, sector. So, I think. Um, Quite often, uh, there is coexistence and interaction of multiple commodities uh, and different actors uh, in the same landscape. So, and we know that uh, the root causes of deforestation and uh, other unsustainable agricultural practices uh, are often very uh, multifaceted. So, uh, it could be economic, uh, social, and environmental. So, they cannot be uh, viewed in isolation. So, I think a, ho a more holistic. Uh, view of the of the root causes uh, and therefore a more holistic uh, resolution to address these root causes uh, uh, causes would require um, multiple actors uh, to to participate and to contribute and to play a role that they need and then they are supposed to uh, so so I think this is why um, it's critical to 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 take a more holistic view from now onwards uh, to look at the challenges at a, at a, at a, at a larger scale. Um, I think um, initiatives uh, such as FULUR and more funding for this kind of landscape level transformation is definitely more than welcome. Uh, so I think for companies uh, like LDC, we definitely uh, look forward to, to benefits uh, from the additional support uh, that is provided uh, by FULUR. And also uh, we're hoping that FULUR could help uh, convene uh, as, a, as, a, as a neutral um, um, platform to help convene uh, the different uh, actors from the public and private sectors in these key landscapes to come together and to, to define co collective objectives and to, to find tangible ways uh, and uh, resources uh, to help address uh, the collective challenges that we have. So I think that's the really the only way uh, to, to work towards a, a, a long-term and sustainable solution of the deforestation challenge we have. Wei, I think you summarized it so well. There's such need and such opportunity, and we are all really, really looking forward to the type of transformative enabling that Folower can contribute to the system. So it'll be great to continue our work together, and it'll be really great to connect it into these broader objectives of how Folio and the portfolio can really help to drive the transformated transformation needed across these landscapes. Thanks so much, Wei. Great to talk to you today. Hello, I'm Craig Hansen, Vice President for Food, Forest, Water, and the Ocean at the World Resources Institute. Liberi is the Secretariat for the Food and Land Use Coalition, or FOLU, which is joining FOLU to ensure food systems play their role in delivering on the sustainable development goals in the Paris Agreement. The FOLU Coalition and its members support science-based solutions and help build a shared understanding of the challenges and opportunities to unlock collective ambitious action. The coalition looks forward to bringing key partnerships to the FOLU agenda, such as Initiative 20 by 20, AFR 100, and the Fable Consortium. These will promote integration across agriculture, environment, rural development, as well as mobilize private finance. As we just heard, private sector action and financing is critical to transforming food systems for a sustainable future. One FOLU coalition member, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, or WBCSD, will leverage existing engagement with CEOs and industry leaders to raise the profile of food systems transformation and the advantages of Fowler's integrated approach. Under Fowler, WBCSD will also organize private sector investors to build shared ambition and accelerate the implementation of key food financing solutions. In addition, the coalition will support innovation and country level engagement to transform private sector commitments into action. This includes hosting a policy accelerator to support governments on the design, financing, and implementation of policy instruments that enable private sector investments in sustainable agriculture and landscapes. The FOLO Coalition is also excited to drive the agenda for restoration under the Folder Impact Program, 
acknowledging that landscape restoration is the most proven and shovel-ready negative emission solution available today. We believe that the world must restore degraded and deforested landscapes at scale to combat climate change and grow rural economies. Folder offers an opportunity to implement restoration activities at scale in 27 countries. On behalf of the Folo Coalition, we are proud to contribute to this timely global initiative. Now I'll turn it back over to our earlier panelists to round out the program and discuss the way forward. Thank you. That was an hour packed with content and ambition. Could I ask for you each for your concluding thoughts? We'll start with Carlos Manuel, then Karen, and finally Martin. What a fantastic uh, program. Uh, thanks uh, to everybody. It, it, it is uh, really energizing to see the GF vision for Polo coming to life uh, through global partners and, and country champions. It is uh, particularly validating to see the concept of integrated approach adopted and adapted uh, by different actors uh, from private sector uh, to country level actors uh, like our FOLU uh, lead in, in Ghana and many, many other countries in, in, in Africa and Latin America. I look uh, forward to um, reconvening at COP27 uh, with you both uh, to discuss how all of these uh, big ideas uh, has uh, transformed in result. And, and definitely this is um, um, one of the most important uh, events and uh, we hope that uh, it can generate a lot of uh, interest as we look forward uh, into Jeff A, which will um, uh, invest a lot of energy, times and resources in all the, the different integrated programs. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, today's program reflects the breadth of expertise brought to Folor by its partner organizations. There's such a depth of knowledge and experience and so many tools and networks that will be brought together under the umbrella of this impact program. It's really an all-star team. I'm also struck by the diversity of geographies and commodities Follow will be working in to drive change. There's a really unique opportunity here to showcase lessons learned and provide a model for public and private sector actors who are seeking an integrated approach to sustainability, but maybe struggling to figure out where to start. I'm pleased that the World Bank can provide leadership charting a way forward towards a sustainable future. And I hope we can reconvene in a year's time to share what we have learned and achieved. Well, thanks very much. And uh, today's event clearly showed that FOLO is a comprehensive approach for public and private sectors to realize climate and land use commitments. With over $300 million leveraging $2.7 billion, the program is well positioned to make agricultural production landscapes more integrated and sustainable. Today, we heard about how FOLU projects in China, Ghana, and Indonesia have the potential to accelerate transformative action on the ground in support of people, planet, and prosperity. We invite you to engage with us on this exciting agenda by visiting our website and follow our global platform offerings, which will showcase lessons learned from key countries and share knowledge in real time. Thank you.